Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing yet another podcast. But today, we're going to be taking a break from motorcycles and talk about some good old-fashioned cars. More specifically, about the Corvette and what makes it so important to any American's vocabulary and the significance of its history. Some quick background. The Corvette is one of America's, if not the world's, most recognizable and infamous automobile. It is created by General Motors and their Chevrolet division. It was introduced in 1953 as an American luxury car, until Chevy signed a brilliant engineer that same year by the name of Zora Arcus Duntoff. This man was from Europe, so he basically grew up around the classic exotic cars from Lamborghini, Ferrari, and even Bugatti. So when he came to America and was hired by Chevy, he knew they needed to make some big changes. Zora, may he rest in peace, is known as the father of the Corvette, making it what it is today and how revolutionary the Corvette is and was towards the advancements of automobiles. First of all, many people know the Corvette as a sports car. Some say it's even a muscle car, but I hate to break it to you, it's neither of those. Or at least it was. The Corvette is now a supercar. Don't believe me? We can talk about it later. But long story short, the Corvette itself has been so influential to many cars you see on the road because of its platform and is and how universal it is, such as the drivetrain. Originally, the Corvette was built on an already existing platform, such as sharing engines with already pre-built models. Zora hated that and changed that. He wanted the Corvette to be unique and to be able to actually stand a chance against the European superpowers. Corvette then skyrocketed in technology and performance, making the Corvette go from a luxury car to a sports car. Many economy cars built by General Motors were built around the platform of the Corvette. What I mean by this is that if you take a look at a modern Chevy Tahoe, Silverado, or even a Cadillac Escalade, guess what? They all have the same engine as the C7 Corvette. Of course, they're tuned differently for different reasons, but still the same heart. Even the handling on many economy cars is thanks to the Corvette and its racing history. In the 50s and 60s, we all know who was dominating the circuit, the Europeans and they would look down at American companies for not being able to keep up. Which is when Zora stepped in. It was a game changer. He was so fascinated by the racing heritage that he wanted to make an American company win. So, when they would take the Corvette to racing events, he wanted to make sure it can handle well. And when they saw how successful the, the handling of the Corvette was, they basically figured why not include it in every American's car because you can't just have a race car be good at handling. Handling is very important for safety. Carroll Shelby is also to thank for this around this time with the Ford GT but of course the difference is the Ford GT was not road legal. Zora had his eyes set on a race car for the road that any American can drive. It definitely took some time for the racing part of things to get set up, but as for the production, oh, business was booming. The Corvette was selling at increasing rates. Today there have been at least 1.5 million Corvettes sold since 1953. The Corvette also has one of the longest used name in automotive history, with almost 70 years of production. We'll wait to see for what they come up with in 2023. For years, Zora wanted to compete with the Corvette in big races, but there was always something holding the Corvette back, and that was the front engine layout. Quick description if you don't know what I mean. Front engine is when the engine of a car sits in front of all four wheels. Zora wanted to make the Corvette mid-engine, where the engine sits in between the four wheels, but also behind the driver. There are many pros to this, and the main one being a better center of gravity, because most of the weight is towards the middle, and when going around the corner real fast, the car won't slip up on you. And also there's more weight in the middle, and also more weight in the rear. And with the Corvette being rear wheel drive, it could help the Corvette gain better traction and tr with the tires and overall improve the launch 
tremendously, especially with the amount of horsepower Zora wants to push out. The mid-engine Corvette concepts never made it into production because the technology of that time simply prevented it. Until 2020, the mid-engine Corvette has finally been created. Sadly, Zora was not alive to see his dream come true, but he is somewhere and he is proud. The 8th generation Corvette, or the C8 Corvette, is the most revolutionary Corvette ever created to date. Let me just run you on some quick numbers. So for example, the Corvette has four different, okay, three. The Corvette has three different levels. The Stingray, the Z06, and the ZR1. Each of them being better than the first. So the Stingray is typically the first one they release when they release a new model and most likely will have the least power out of the three. The Z06 is a more sportier version of the Stingray with more power. It's typically also wider um, to increase the handling. And then the ZR1 is just all out <laughs> race car for the road. Absolutely amazing. And for example, if we take a look at the numbers for the C7 compared to the C8, because these are the most recent, the C7 Stingray had around 455 horsepower. The C7 Z06 had 650. And the C7 ZR1 had 755. Absolutely insane numbers. Now we take a look at the C8. So before we talk about the C8, the C7 ZR1, 755 horsepower. It had a zero to 60 of 2.9 seconds. And this is the front engine layout, right? The C8 is now mid-engine. So the C8, all they have released right now is the Stingray because it's 2021, so it's very new. The Z06, I think, is coming in 2023. So the C8 Stingray, 495 horsepower. But that mid-engine really makes a difference. C7 ZR1, 755 horsepower, 2.9 second 0 to 60. C8 Stingray, 495 horsepower. Mid-engine, 2.9 second 0 to 60. That is absolutely insane. The, the newest generation Corvette base model is just as fast as the previous generation's race model. <laughs> the mid-engine layout makes such a difference and it is such a game changer for the success of Chevrolet and the Corvette. And once they released the Stingray, it won immediately. Like the C8 won its races immediately. They got their first win in the 24 hours of Le Mans the same year it was released. That's crazy. That's, that, that is really crazy and very exciting. And now the Z06 has been released, well, introduced. It's not, it's not being sold to the public yet, but they are taking pre-orders. The numbers on the C Z06. The Z06 is obviously another mid-engine Corvette. 670 horsepower. It makes more power than the previous Z06, but it is naturally aspirated. No supercharger, no turbos, all motor and engine making 670 horsepower that makes the c8 z06 the <laughs> it makes it the highest horsepower naturally aspirated v8 in automotive history 
That is insane. There are no other numbers re released for that car, but it is already changing the game. The whole C8 platform is already changing the game, and I'm excited to see what they have coming in the future. This is why the Corvette and its history is so influential and important to know. Whew, that was a lot. I try to make it short. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.